Welcome to Kidney Journeys, a program brought to you by patients for patients with kidney disease and their families, hosted by The Road Back to Life, a mentoring group for kidney patients. For more information on The Road Back to Life, visit us at www.theroadbacktolife.com. Now here's your host. We wanted to thank you guys for watching or listening to our show today. This is the second part of a two-part show, and we are talking about dialysis access. So we encourage you to listen to the first part if you haven't already. If you did, thanks for sticking around with us for this second part. Um, it's just a fun, informative show where we are all experiencing or we are all sharing our experiences with um, dialysis and the different types of access sites that you may also experience. Um, so yeah, uh, we most of us are here in Washington and it is smoky outside. So we're spending a lot of time inside. Uh, and then, of course, we have Don in Colorado Springs. Hi, guys. Uh, it's a wonderful day here. We, uh, we got rid of our smoke. Uh, it's, <laughs> Colorado has become no smoking. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for Colorado. <laughs> I rub it in. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's a lie because we're on fire like every other state in the western part of the United States, I swear. But anyway, today we're just talking about uh, dia uh, dialysis access um, sites and questions. A lot of people on Facebook have... Uh, have been wanting to know uh, about that. And, and the, these questions that we come up with were off of that. So we were here to answer your questions and, and we're gonna do it. And, and we're gonna be a little lighthearted about this because you know, um, it's not that what we, we think it's funny. It's, it's that this is how we get through sometimes. Uh, life is just that way. You can either cry or you can laugh a little bit about it and move on. And that's how we've chose to do it. And the five people we've got here today, myself including, are all Road Back to Life members. We have Walt, Charity, Bob, and Ashley. And Ashley and I host this show. Um, and so we are going to try to answer your questions from a patient's perspective, not necessarily a medical one. If you need to get medical answers about things, we'll say you need to talk to your, your nephrologist or your PCP or your primary care physician or, or whatever. We're not medical experts. And we, but we have expertise in, in the fact that we have dealt with these things. And because we've got through it, you can too. So the first que the the next question we have on our list is what was surgery and recovery like for your specific access site or sites and did the surgery leave a scar So uh, guys somebody want to answer some of this who wants to start it out Oh so, I'll start <laughs> Go ahead uh, 7 years ago when uh I sat down with the surgeon um, <clears throat> because I've spent time in the service. I've got quite a bit of body art or tattoos and the arm that I chose uh, has most of my Marine Corps tattoos. So he said that he would do his best uh, to not cut through any of my tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so he did, and he's got about, there was about an eight inch scar that I have on my right arm from the surgery that he did to put in my fistula. So there is cutting involved. <laughs> uh, and you do go into major surgery, they do knock you out. Uh, you wake up, you're groggy, uh, you're sore. <laughs> Because it's, you know, let's say we're cutting into the body. It doesn't tickle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob. I mean, what I want to tell you guys is, is, I think I mentioned before, I am like the world's luckiest dialysis patient. So I'm going to tell you how it can go because this is the way it went for me. And even my doctors tell me, 
that it's just not right. It doesn't happen like this all the time, and I'm one of those one percenters, I guess. I don't know. But I walked in. You know, I had the vein mapping that we were talking about earlier. Now they've got a, a machine they just rub over your arm. They even do it at the dialysis centers now to check your fistula. It's great. But I went in, and so when I went in for my surgery with my vascular surgeon, I had the permanent marker drawings on my arm. He knew where to go. Yeah, they do it with a, with a permanent marker, and it was there for 10 days. <laughs> they told me, don't wash it off, leave it there. And I walked in, and uh, my surgeon, really nice guy, and he says, hi, Bob, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a mechanic. I work on Subarus. And he goes, oh, I got a WRX. It's doing this. What's wrong with it? So we talked it over. <laughs> we diagnosed it. He needed a clutch. And he said, well, I'll talk to you after I'm done. When he did, they knocked me out. I went in, I had surgery for about 40 minutes. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but my scar is about, unlike Walt's, mine is about that long. And my fistula is right there. But, uh, they woke me up. I was groggy a little bit because it was a general anesthesia, but a really light dose. And then the surgeon came in and said, so when can I make an appointment to have this car fixed? <laughs> and, and I said, well, I'll take care of that when I get back to work for you. So I did end up changing his clutch. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was a little painful. Uh, not too bad. Honestly, I've had much worse pain from smashed thumbs <laughs> being a mechanic. <laughs> uh, and, and the recovery time, you know, honestly, it's hard for me to remember now, but it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long at all. And, and then, like I said, my fish has been working perfect ever since. But that's the way it can go. It doesn't always go that way. One girl day you had all of those shape. Yeah, um, same for you. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if anybody else here has had a graft, but um, I'll let Charity talk about the PD catheter part. Um, but when I had my graft placed, I was having my peritoneal dialysis catheter removed. I also had a chest catheter placed because I couldn't use my graft right away. Um, it had to heal a little bit. Um, and then I had my graft placed in my upper left bicep area. Um, so I have like two, two inch scars uh, where they kind of went in and tunneled that graft through. Um, I also have tattoos and so they went around everything. Um, but uh, I think that my graft out of the getting the chest catheter and the peritoneal dialysis catheter, um, that was the harder one to recover from. Um, my arm was very tight feeling. I couldn't make it extend straight for a while uh, just because of the surgery and what they had done. And they told me that that was very normal. So I kind of had this like curved arm for <laughs> like four weeks. <laughs> I wore a lot of jackets and just put my hand in my pocket because it was weird to hold up because I could not make it go straight. And um, it was sore. <laughs> it was definitely sore because they're tunneling through your skin to get that, you know, false kind of artery in your body, um, essentially. So um, it was pretty sore. And and I remember they were like, are you sure you want all three done at the same time? You know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's just do what I want. <laughs> Knock it out. And then I woke up and I was like, I don't think this is a good idea. Bad plan. Like, oh, yeah. no, um, but at least I didn't need another surgery. Uh, but yeah, I just had, for me, the neck catheter was easy. I wasn't sore. It was just taped up um, really easy. PD catheter for me was really easy too. I don't remember being sore at all. Um, it was easier than I expected. Um, my graft. Um, I think since everything else had been easy, I expected it to be easy. And um, I was just really sore for probably like six weeks. It took a while for me to get my arm to <laughs> extend straight. <laughs> but that was probably the worst part. What about you, Charity, and your, PD your peritoneal dialysis catheter? Yeah, uh, it really makes a difference. Uh, Peter, I got that at the same time in the same surgery that I got my fistula. And um, 
I the fistula ended up being a problem so it clotted right out of the OR um, and wasn't usable so it seems like they were rolling me down the hallway one way and then rolling me back <laughs> and I went back into surgery and they reaccessed and did whatever they do to try to get it working and that was in my upper arm and I've got two And um, that fistula a few treatments and then it clotted again. So um, me, uh, I was only 20 at the time, fairly vain. Uh, I'm right here. Um, to put it in my upper arm because I thought it was ugly and I didn't want to have it in my lower arm. The problem with that is that if it doesn't in the lower arm, they can go to the upper arm, but they can't go backwards apparently. Now, I don't know if that's still true, um, but it was in 1998 <laughs> when I got it. They, uh, You're freezing up really bad, uh, Charity. Uh, sorry? I said you're freezing up really bad. I'm sorry. Um, oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it, it's coming in bits and pieces. Basically, uh, I, think, I think what you're saying, and tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, basically you had, you had a fish that placed up in your upper bicep area. And, and it plugged up right off the bat and they went in and redid it and it plugged up again a few days or a few times later. Um, but the peritoneal in comparison, was that an easier one to have put in than, uh, than the fistula? Well, it, it was when I was 20. I don't remember having any issues right after. It seemed like I recovered pretty quickly um, so that's what I was expecting, uh, when I went back and got another one when I was 36. Um, and I had a much harder time, a much slower recovery. Um, and I, I don't know why I was in a lot more pain. Um, although I had a lot of, um, uh, it's like uh, material in your um, in your uh, gut that they have to like cut through so they had to kind of like blow up my abdomen and get adhesions. rid of all those, yeah adhesions thank you yes um, and so maybe that's why I was in so much pain afterwards but it took me like a week of recovery you know um, on pain meds and you know, moving slow and <laughs> needing help going to the bathroom and everything with for my, with my husband. So that one was a lot harder. Yeah, but mine was mine was pr pretty simple. It was day surgery. They went in. They just they numbed the area. They gave me a little I don't care what you do to me shot, and they kept coming <laughs> about every. It seemed like about every ten minutes. You need some more. Okay, you know, <laughs> and then they said we're done, and I was out of there. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, that that was me, and, and my fish that works fine, and I did. It was a little sore for about a week, and after that, it was fine. We need to move on, Ashley. You got number five. Yeah. So I know that some of you guys have touched on this already, but did any of you experience any complications with your dialysis access? No. I Yay, have mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should all be mad at me. I agree. <laughs> I didn't have any either, but it sounds like, uh, you know, uh, both Ashley and Charity have had some, some issues, which they spoke to. And, and I think it's fairly common. Uh, you know, it's not like... Um, it's all going to go easy and scot-free. Sometimes 
uh, it gets a little more complicated than others. And uh, and Walt, was yours pretty much uh, kind of they put it put your fistula in, and then you were on your on the road. Uh, the first couple years uh, after I got used to it and everything, I didn't have any issues. Uh, there was one year where I did have some clotting issues, and uh, I spent another week in the hospital. Uh, having it unclotted every day for a week by a surgeon. Yeah. So yeah. There, there are moments, you know, but for the most part, for the last, for the whole time that I've been on dialysis, uh, you know, I had a, a one week period out of seven years. So I, I consider myself lucky. <laughs> Unless it's really important, Bob, I need to move on. We're, our time is kind of moving. I just want to add that we had a really wonderful mentor who actually used the same uh, fistula for his dialysis treatments for almost 30 years. They can last a long, long time. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, uh, and so here, here's the next question up. <laughs> Some of us can answer this. I know. <laughs> And it is, what happens to your access if you no longer need dialysis, like after being transplanted? Uh, can your access still be used if you need to at some point in time? Not with a graft, um, usually. Uh, so the graft, like my surgeon told me, they don't like healthy bodies, they don't like healthy kidneys. Uh, so they clot off after you're transplanted. And uh, she said you might experience a little soreness, maybe a little swelling, skin may become red. If that happens, just let us know. Mine clotted off maybe three weeks after my transplant. No pain, no issues. Um, it's still in my arm. They leave it in. There's, I don't have any complications with it. It doesn't hurt. Uh, so they just leave it there. Um, so there is no longer a thrill like Bob explain to us what that is. Um, so if I, uh, you can feel the graft under my arm. If you touch it with your fingers, you can feel the tube, uh, but there's no like heartbeat or anything to it, so. And as you guys have learned from me, mine is now 10 years out on transplant and it still works and it sounds just like it did the day I got my transplant, so. Awesome. So for peritoneal dialysis, they definitely do remove your dialysis catheter when you get a transplant. They wait uh, a little bit to make sure that your transplant is working mm -hmm. and that you don't need more dialysis. Um, and then they take it out because it's a plastic tube sticking out of your belly and it, it's, um, you, can, you can get infection. There's infection risk. So yeah, they, they pull that sucker right out and you get a little, a little scar that's you know probably that big and it's kind of an indent so it's yeah it's weird yeah Not and and, and your access your, your access once it's you know uh, on a fistula where they're hooking your uh, vein and artery together uh, oftentimes people leave them in uh, just in case the kidney goes bad again and they have to go back on dialysis uh, and and so on and so forth. I want to state emphatically, you cannot go on and off dialysis by yourself. You don't get to pick and choose. Once you're on dialysis, you need to stay on dialysis until your nephrologist says you no longer need it. And that would be if you get transplanted, okay? So uh, I don't want this question to mislead anybody out there thinking that, yeah, I don't, I, I, I think I don't need dialysis anymore. Well, you're wrong. You tell your doctor tells you you don't, you still do. <laughs> okay, Ashley. Does anyone have any last minute thoughts or advice about getting or taking care of your access? Bob. Don't be afraid of it. I know that seems silly, but it's absolutely true. 
Uh, I was so terrified of my fixture lead that I picked up somebody's kitty and it scratched my arm. And I was absolutely terrified that it was going to rip the fistula right out of my arm, you know, and uh, it's, it, uh, and, and being a mechanic, right? I was really panicked for lifting things and my arm and all that. And then after I got that cat scratch, I had an appointment with my nephrologist and he, he was really nice, you guys. I mean, he smiled, but you could tell he was trying not to laugh when I told him I was worried about him. And he said, okay, Bob, he says, You've been a mechanic for a long, long time, right? And I said, yeah. And he says, you ever been cut in anywhere where it was deep enough to have an artery open up? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> and he said, well, it's probably not going to happen now either, Bob. <laughs> so, you know, so don't be afraid. Uh, protect it. Do all the best you can. You know, like I wore long sleeve shirts and stuff to make sure that if, if I did get something that, you know, was sharp, I protected myself. But it's it's... It's not as scary as I made it out to be at first. I mean, I thought for sure that if I looked wrong, I was going to bleed everywhere. But no, it's not that way. We are wonderful machines, our human bodies. And uh, it worked out really, really well for me. Like I said, my fish was 13 years old and it's beautiful. I'm proud of it. That's weird, but I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Last thoughts, guys? Um, I would just say plan if you can, if you're a part of that 20% that um, knows dialysis is in your future. Uh, talk to your nephrologist, meet with a vascular surgeon um, if you've decided what type of dialysis you want to do. Uh, get a fistula or a graft placed so you can skip the neck catheter. I just planned that peritoneal dialysis would work for me. It did not. Uh, and so everything had to be quickly removed and new things had to be put in. Uh, so uh, just kind of plan ahead if you can. If you're one of those people, got any thoughts, Walt? I got a parting thought. Yeah, you know, that dialysis isn't the end of life. It's just the different life that you're going to live and have fun doing it. Yeah, we, we've kind of, kind of got a saying: uh, you dialyze to live, you don't live to dialyze. Meaning simply, don't plan your life around dialysis. Use dialysis to plan your life, you know, to go out and live it. And, uh, and, and that being said, we hope that we have answered some of your questions. We hope that you gained a bit of knowledge out of this, that some of the fear is gone. We know simply because we have been there and are still there because we, once you become a kidney patient, you're always a kidney patient simple as that that you're going to be okay you're going to be all right life's going to look a little different things are going to have to be done a little differently maybe but you can still live your life and have a good life and it's your choice it's your choice if you want this to be miserable then it will be miserable but if you choose to want to see your grandkids grow up if you choose to go to hawaii you know every year you can still do that there's dialysis centers in Hawaii. Should you like to throw away your money? You can go to Las Vegas. They've got a <laughs> lot of them there. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, that, that there's no reason. That there's even uh, a cruises that are set up for dialysis patients. So it's a life that can still be lived and lived in a manner that is meaningful you, know, you get to uh to enjoy life maybe a little differently but don't fear it don't fear these things if you've got any questions for for any of us here or or if you've got any medical questions be sure to talk to your nephrologist a doctor of some sort anyway if you don't have a nephrologist we're we're suggesting you find one but place those medical questions before your doctor and, and, and start getting your answers so you can plan. And, and the other thing is, is simply just live your life. I thought it was over. I didn't think I was going to go anywhere or do anything. Um, I was 56 years old when I started dialysis. I'm 73 today. I've been transplanted almost 17 years ago. 
I spent a year and nine months on dialysis. I did it all wrong in the beginning and I straightened it out at the end. And I learned a lot in between and we want to share with you those things. So we hope that this has been a sharing moment that you too can leave the fears behind and start looking forward to a different life and you can start planning. This is all of us from all of us here at The Road Back to Life saying to you, be kind to one another. This is Kidney Journeys and the team at The Road Back to Life saying thank you for listening and for allowing us to be a part of your journey. For more information on The Road Back to Life, visit us at www.theroadbacktolife.com. Also, consider subscribing to our channel so we can keep you updated with new content and videos. Remember, we're all in this together. Now go out and be kind to one another.